I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Colin and in this video we're going to have a look at the 2023 outlook for Falcon Forged. So definitely a interesting project on a larger scale. In this video specifically a focus on the price movement, dilution of the market cap and a more analytical approach to what this project is actually doing, how they changed the course over the last year, year and a half. So we can see they started small at about $2 reaching in the crypto gaming bull run, an all time high of about $45 ish, 44.53. That daily tradable volume at the time was 91 million. Absolutely crazy. Obviously listed on the bigger exchanges, we got Binance, KuCoin, Coinbase. So there's definitely enough volume there. You can see that as well being traded here, just Binance alone in the current market conditions, almost 5 million. Then KuCoin pushing about 1.8 million and Coinbase only $300,000. Yobi here with some good volume as well, over half a million dollars. Total amount traded on a daily basis, about 12 and a half million. This is important when taking into consideration the dilution of the circulating supply. Uh, trading at uh, about 50%, so with meaning 113 million market cap, 207 fully diluted, only at a currently $4. So on a 10x, this would basically have a billion dollar market cap, and then we would go into the crazy numbers uh, of about 2 billion on the actual overall uh, fully diluted market cap. Impressive. Uh, Filken obviously did really well. It has gone down quite a bit. If we look at the last year's progress, uh, we reached the peak here at about $18 and then throughout the bear market, it hasn't really recovered as most projects haven't. So that's not really strange. However, in the last uptrend of the last two weeks, the end of January, it has seen you know, a 40% gain right there. So that is nice. The main problem with this project is the relative positioning in the market. That is one of the questions I had from somebody that asked, what is it about Falcon Forged that asked me to create this video that makes it so unique or well positioned? So obviously I did some research prior to this. And one of the examples I have is the Falcon Forge marketplace. This gives a really good indication of the relative tradable volume. So all the games that they have on their, let's say now they also have a layer, a layer, layer blockchain, right? Layer one blockchain that they created. I think it's called Elysium. And what happens is they're trying to create infrastructure, right? Before where they had like a gaming platform, it wasn't really clear which positioning they're going to take. They have their own games that can, can launch on their chain on basically the Falcon Forged ecosystem, a marketplace with NFTs and everything. Then they have a DEX, uh, a fault, there's a banking system. Uh, what this allows is basically for games to launch on their infrastructure and all they would really need is users. So let's have a look at the NFT marketplace to get an indication of the potential. Highest ever item selling, 100 grand. Most popular item looks like a tradable card. So the amount of users in the last 20 months is only 38,000, which is extremely underwhelming, right? 38,000 for a crypto project is not that much. The market volume, we're talking about 22,000 and 200,000 transactions, is not that significant. Uh, when we look at the trade history in the last 12 months, total trades to less than 280, auctions that are being done, uh, the volume, so I put the volume on the last three months just to get an indication, but the last 12 months, it's not even a million dollars, right? In the last three months, it's almost, uh, just over a hundred grand with the majority there coming from Falcon's own uh, assets, right? And the Falcon land doing the most there. Um, this is not that interesting, the land assets, but overall you can see these numbers are not really that interesting. Just uh, to give you an example, because it's an NFT marketplace, right? If I would uh, go for the OpenSea users, it's uh, more than 1.5 million active users, right? And this is just a quick swap from Google. Uh, this is 38,000 total users over the last 12 months. So it's basically non-existent. They are definitely focused on their own ecosystem, right? Which obviously limits the potential, but gives them more control. 
Then when you look at the integration possibilities, I think this is the most interesting component, why potentially people believe uh, in this asset as in Falcon Forge. Falcon Forge is an established non-fungible token, NFT game studio marketplace and DAP incubator with more than 10 games, 20,000 community and top five NFT marketplace volume. Total use on the platform, 126,000. Active users, 112,000. Tradable volume, uh, over uh, 2.6 million, right? Still not that significant. They have the marketplace, the DEX, Agora, multi-feature NFT marketplace on Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, Feed Chain. So there's a bridge extension there. And they manage multiple currencies within their platform and their ecosystem with relative to the NFTs. So again, this is more of an infrastructure-based brand that ties in other games and then supports them with their assets. Obviously, these products, they take a significant amount of time to, to launch, right? Then they have games. I checked out most of these games. They are quite low quality. Uh, I think everything is free to play, right? But it requires adaption. The brand has to become bigger. Uh, over time, it would have to grow. Um, most of these assets um, are, are not that interesting. Uh, as you can see, even the NFTs are really low quality. But, of course, it's interesting to consider that give them some time. They have done really well in the past. However, the most important thing is they have very strong partnerships, right? So the partnerships is definitely one thing that could basically turn this product around. But they have definitely chosen uh, to focus on the more old school type games. Uh, we're not talking A-level titles or A-level things. And there's definitely a big focus on, let's say, this layer one blockchain. Uh, so it's called Elysium, right? Where the enterprise focus of the token company, Falcon Forge, Falcon Studios, is definitely being positioned to onboard a large amount of games, right? So where it comes, for example, to Illuvium, this is a game studio that builds out their own games, different games. Gala Games is basically the node structure that hosts different games on that platform. Sandbox, obviously being Sandbox, metaverse style, that allows to onboard experiences within the Sandbox. Uh, and then you have, for example, Immutable X, that is a layer two chain, that uh, facilitates the onboarding of games and NFTs. So these all have a specific expertise that they're focused on. And what I feel like with Falcon is that they're trying to do everything. Not necessarily meaning they would fail if they're doing everything. The main component here might be that they're trying to do everything. And because of that, it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources, right? If I looked at the Twitter beforehand, you know, this looks like quite a big team, <laughs> ultimately, in terms of people, you know, there's maybe, I don't know, 30 to 50 people in this picture, uh, but they have good support in terms of their following, right? They don't have a crazy follower account, 130,000 for a company that's been around for two, two and a half years. Um, it's definitely uh, still engaged. They're still pushing out a lot of content, right? So that engine is working quite well. I am just not a fan of focusing on low quality, uh, quantity based uh, approach, which I feel like they, they have a little bit more onboarding to do there. I like to maybe have less games of higher quality, uh, but that's a business model choice. And I don't know enough about Falcon to judge them uh, based on that specific topic, right? I haven't never really dove in deep in this because this is probably a three to five day analysis because there are so many different assets in their ecosystem. What I'm most curious about is to understand what they are doing. And I feel I have a good understanding of what they're doing now and how that relates basically back to the price of the token, right? So it's sitting about 415 right now. All the upcoming releases for this token every single month are staking on locks. Right, so staking will provide tokens, but that influx is only uh, $141,000, which is um, less than you know 1% of the circulating supply would be added. There's no ROI on that because it comes from the staking tokenomics, and it's less than 7% of daily trading volume at the current moment. So these releases have no direct impact as a supply shock on the actual price which is interesting. The tokenomics are bare basic, right? They launched a long time ago. 
And what is interesting, if you look at the, the vesting, this is basically staking, right? That's still to be released uh, from, oh wait, wait, we're right now here. So the staking is basically the blue line. And then the private sale was 100% TGE. So that, that's the flat line, basically. There's already dilution that has happened. And then the next one, which is going to be picked up is team, but that's not going to happen for like a year and a half, right? So we're, we're talking like this segment right here from here until a year later. It's just a very tiny part and they have a very big longevity. So the, the dilution in the supply that basically started is going to start this month or started basically uh, last year, right? But it was very minimal. So the dilution that is going to start from this month uh, onwards, somewhere here, we're, we're talking here, we're sitting at about, you know, 23 million and 30% all the way up to 50% of the supply still that needs to be unlocked. That's going to take six more years, which means that there's definitely a good stability in the price potential right there as an indicator. Uh, when the tokens are actually being unlocked right in in previous uh, unlocks they have been uh, more significant right and it, when they were more significant uh, in terms of the releases that were occurring uh, you can see that there was different price measured at the time but there haven't hasn't been really a clear pattern here sometimes on average it went down so definitely the price was up before the release but because it's it's all from staking. It's not um, that big of a deal. You know, there's no huge discrepancies. We're talking 3% up at the highest or 3% down. So this is nothing related to, you know, potential short or long opportunities there, tokens being dumped. Uh, this seems like an extremely healthy price movement with no significant indicators right there. On the tokenomics, as you can see, uh, over four years, uh, over 10 years for the team, right? 100% um, TGE and then locked for four years, the reserve. So when that reserve opens up, yeah, you might see some movement there. Um, but that reserve would be deployed, I assume, to a market maker to be slowly sold off if the company needs funds. If this po token would pump in the next crypto gaming bull run, uh, where they are well positioned as a brand, have the prior experience of pumping, you know, one uh, God candle and, and one uh, good semi pump here, then obviously you would have to take into consideration that Falcon will likely do quite well in the next uh, run based on their current holders and their relative position on the market, right? If we go to other scan and just have a quick look at the holders. Okay, so the bridge is holding a lot of tokens, Binance, KuCoin, right? Crypto.com, KuCoin. There are some individual wallets here. I'm not going to open everything, right? But we, we see a significant amount of holders. So if you're in the top 100 holders, then you would need a minimum balance of 35,000. It's not extremely significant in terms of how many uh, tokens you have to hold, but $35,000 is definitely a lot of money. If you have that type of money, then you're basically in the top 100 holders of Vulcan Watched. Uh, when we're talking about tokens, that is, you know, 10,000 tokens would give you about 40,000 at the moment. Um, that basically, in the last bull run would have been four hundred thousand dollars so definitely big big significant amounts because the token is right now down it, it's like forty thousand still a lot right but it might not sound as significant but it's definitely a significant amount would it ever reach that all-time high again uh, depending on the total market influx how much liquidity is going to enter that market in the next bull run i would say it's definitely a possibility what is important to consider here again what i referred to before is that there's a lot more relevant competition right now that have positioned, in my opinion, themselves a lot better than Vulcan. It is quite unclear what the goal is, uh, where they are th thriving uh, to work towards, where they want to be positioned in the market, and how they differentiate from other projects. Well, I feel like Illuvium, Gala Games, Gala Games maybe not so much, but Illuvium, uh, you know, Sandbox, uh, we refer to Immutable X. They have positions themselves quite well in what their expertise is and how they want to do it. Even Gala, I would say, has a lot clearer picture than Vulcan 
uh, in that way. So if we have anybody watching this video, maybe you, that knows a lot about Falcon or what their uh, true ambitions are, uh, feel free to write it down in the comments below. Talking about the price movement and the prediction, I would say as a general forecast, in my opinion, yes, it would see a linear upward trend uh, relative to the crypto gaming market if the market reverses. Uh, definitely going to be, uh, we're talking 2 billion fully diluted. Uh, the dilution here is a very good thing already uh, because that leaves less supply shock pressure specific because the tokenomics that are going to be released are very much focused on non-ROI opportunities for investors, right? So definitely a good opportunity to ride this wave back up for Falcon. I wouldn't be afraid myself to put some money into this project, but I would not expose myself to this if there are better opportunities in the market, which I think there are. Um, there are obviously some big influencers KOLs that are on this project that have heavy bags in this project. So that might be something to consider as well, uh, because KOLs are a big part of the crypto market in terms of pumping tokens. Doesn't mean you have to diamond hand this token. You can just ride the wave whenever the news comes. That's everything in this video. If you enjoyed my analysis through Tech Digits, there is a link in the description down below. You can sign up and use this tool for free. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.